Hello, welcome. Read this problem, give it a shot, and press play when you're ready to solve it with me. Alright, for positive values of x, which expression is equivalent to this one? In other words, they want us to simplify it. So there's a lot to unpack here. Let's do it. I see that we have one term here that multiplies these two factors, and then we add a second term there. So I'm going to deal with each of these individually. The first term, we've got 16x squared. Just be aware this squared only applies to the x, not to the 16. But the way the root is written, the square root, is for the whole term. So that whole term is to the 1 half power. Then we're multiplying it by x to the 2 thirds power, which really means the third root of x squared. But we'll get there. Plus our second term. This is the third root of 8 times x to the fifth. And when you write 8x to the fifth, the 5 is only applying to this x. But the whole thing, we're taking the third root of the whole thing. So I've rewritten it like this because now what I can do is apply some things that I know about exponents. The first thing is that I'm going to distribute this exponent to both factors inside the parentheses. And the same thing here. You can actually distribute exponents over multiplication, just like you distribute multiplication over addition. Isn't that awesome? So here we take 16 to the 1 half. We're going to calculate that in a moment. And then x squared to the 1 half times x to the 2 thirds plus, well here, 8 to the 1 third is first. And then x to the 5th to the 1 third is second. All right, what do we do now? Look at all this stuff. Well, first 16 to the 1 half. That means the square root of 16, which is 4. So we took care of that part. Then we've got x squared to the half. Multiply these two exponents, right? This is our law of exponents here. We're going to multiply 2 times a half is 1. So that's x to the 1, or just 4x to the first power. Took care of that. This is a multiplication sign. Looks like a subtraction sign. Times x to the 2 thirds. And that we can simplify in just a moment. Over here we have the third root of 8. That's just 2, right? Took care of this. Uh, it's 2 because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. The third root of 8. A number times itself 3 times. That is 8. Times x to the 5 thirds. And all I did there was multiply 5 by a third. And now I, I'm almost there. And now I look at this and I say, well, here multiplying 2 equal bases. So what do I do? I add my exponents. And I get 4x to the first, so 1 plus 2 thirds. It's 1 and 2 thirds, or 5 thirds. I'm thinking 1 is 3 over 3. And 3 over 3 plus 2 over 3 is 5 over 3. So it's 4x to the 5 thirds plus 2x to the 5 thirds. And what do we do here? Well, this is saying we have two group, uh, four groups excuse me, of x to the 5 thirds, and then two more groups of x to the 5 thirds. So altogether, we have six groups of x to the 5 thirds, right? It's, so, it's something like if you have, let's say, just 4x plus 2x, same idea. You have four groups of x plus two groups of x, and that's six groups of x. The same idea is happening right here. You have four groups and two groups, four groups and two groups of x to the fifth, so you have six groups of them all together. together. That phrasing groups really helps me out, and that's this right here because this is six times x to the five thirds. It's the third root of x to the fifth. Same idea. And if you're not convinced, you could write it out. This equals six times x to the fifth to the one third. See how that's equal? Five times a third. That's the same thing as five thirds. And then the third root of x to the fifth would look like this. Right, right there, like that. And that's exactly what I have here in choice two. All right. Hope that helped.